All right, everyone, I've been outside for maybe two seconds, and uh, I'm already getting attacked by mosquitoes. There's just water everywhere. It's been raining so much here. I'm sure there's plenty of flooding in the area. But I'm here because I need to harvest some things, and the rain doesn't care if uh, I need to harvest some things. So we're going to harvest some basil very quickly, and we're going to go inside, and we're going to make some eggplant dip. Um, from my own eggplants, my own basil, my own garlic, um, and various other ingredients that I'm going to show you guys how it's done. My first time making it, so uh, hopefully it comes out well. Let's go inside. Alright everyone, so we're inside, away from the rain, away from the mosquitoes, and uh, we got all of the ingredients we need. We have our eggplants, we have the... Um, the basil I just harvested, we have an onion we bought at the store, some fresh garlic that I grew and cured. And then we also have uh, potatoes here. We're going to add that into the eggplant dip. And it's important to know, um, you know, the, just different things you can do with all the foods that you guys may or may not be harvesting. I think that's kind of the goal of this cooking series, I guess, that I'm going to try to do is try to any chance I get is cook something for you guys with the food that I grow and kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe expand your horizons a little bit. You know, we're always getting food. You know, this is some leftover raspberries from yesterday, which was filled to the brim. I mean, the raspberries just are endless. I have some Satsuma mandarins here that were picked a bit early, but my friend from Louisiana sent me this, sent me these. They're still actually quite, um, quite good, believe it or not. This here is a zucchini that we harvested, and it's the last one of the year. I'm not sure what we're going to do with that yet. But we also have plenty of peppers in here, chocolate peppers, Carmen, Jimmy Nardello. Plenty of peppers still left and tomatoes still left of the season. We also just got some shallots that I'm going to plant from the garlicstore.com. It's a nursery. You can buy different varieties of garlic and different varieties of shallots. And... Um, we're going to plant a whole bunch of different varieties of garlic, and my friend, um, New York Garlic Guy, actually gave me some garlic of his own that he grew. We're going to plant some of that, as well as my own garlic that we cured ourselves. So, um, you know, I think it's really important, not that I should be giving anybody cooking tips, but I think it's pretty important that uh, you guys figure out what to do with your food you know, that you grow. I think it's important to grow the things you like, but I've grown things this year that I had really never tasted before, uh, like fennel. I've only eaten fennel really a few times, maybe as a kid. So having it now and knowing what to do with it, it's become one of my favorite vegetables. And this is an experiment. You know, This is eggplant dip. I've never made eggplant dip before. Uh, previous years, my girlfriend and I, we've done, we've had plenty more eggplants than I do this year. I mean, and of larger size, um, usually with more flesh. So, with uh, you know, for an eggplant parm, the more flesh you have, the more it can absorb that oil and the sauce and all kinds of goodness to make it a better eggplant parm. But these are kind of smaller, a little thinner. So, if you're making it, you know, a dip, this is I think what I can talk about with you guys. Is that if you're going to make a, an eggplant dip, you kind of want the Asian varieties of eggplants, right? This is more of a black diamond Italian type, you know, that's big, big and black uh, eggplants that are more diamond shaped, where, you know, some the Asian varieties are more slender and they're thinner, and then that way they have less flesh, more skin, and I think that can aid in a, a better dip, perhaps. But it's not necessarily as good for an eggplant parm, right? So uh, let's go over the ingredients real quick and what we're doing right now with this to kind of make this more of a cooking cooking episode. But uh, so far we have just have some eggplants that I cut in half. We put the skin down side, the skin side down, kind of trying to get that to soften up a little bit, trying to get that to... Um, really get some uh, searing to it. We put some uh, sea salt on the top here to try to get rid of some water. I hope that's it's really not going to happen too much, but any excess water from these eggplants we can get rid of will intensify the flavor a little bit. 
We're just sauteing the stuff in olive oil. That's it. Just in the pan. This is going to take a little bit of time. And in the meantime, I just cut up some vegetables here. You know, uh, this isn't a homegrown onion, but a store-bought onion here. And, you know, if you're running low in space, like I am, you only have so many garden beds, right? I only have three garden beds. Really not that whole much space to them. Um, you know, you got to be choosy in what you can grow. And I think onions are quite good if you grow them yourself, but they're also very cheap and very easy to find. So even things like potatoes. You know, this is a store-bought potato here. And it's just, I gotta be a little bit more careful. I'd much rather grow my own garlic, which is more expensive. Um, you can get different varieties of garlic, which can probably taste a lot better than the store-bought garlic. Same thing with basil. I find basil is pretty easy to grow. It's really uh, expensive. So getting, you know, the amount of basil that I get, you guys saw the plants in the beginning, or the, the single plant I have left in the beginning of the video. I have mountains of, uh, of basil. In fact, if I go here in the freezer, we can see down here, there's all kinds of pesto that my girlfriend made for me. I kind of grill it and she makes it. We also have more here. Um, here's some chives I harvested in the spring. I mean, I think I have even more Hmm. I don't know, but she's basically split the base, the, the pesto with me. And um, so she probably has about five in her freezer. I have four in mine. But you can see here, this is a uh, jam from my friend Brian in Louisiana. Shout out to Brian. He makes really, really great jam. Um, he sent me not only a fig jam, but also a fig and strawberry jam that I've eaten before. He sent it to me again, and it's so, so good. Um, so maybe I'll do a video on that jam. I actually have the ingredients and the directions along with it, so that'll be pretty cool. But we're really just waiting, guys, now, because what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, sear this a little bit, saute this a little bit, and then we're basically going to cook the onion down a little bit, get this to brown some, cook the garlic a little bit, add in the basil. Um, the potato's already cooked. This was a potato that we microwaved and then put that in the fridge it was a leftover so we'll basically just kind of get this to brown just slightly and then what I'll do is I will put all this together everything when it's all done in the blender we'll turn the blender on blend that down and we'll get a nice dip consistency to it and it should be pretty good so I'm trying to think what else I can add to this you know I have a spice drawer here some of my own spices you know, this is like um, some uh, hot peppers I grew. We grounded this down. I also have purple sage. Or pineapple sage, sorry. Not purple sage. Um, we have my own rosemary. But you know what, guys? I, I think we need to get some, really some parsley. I think would be great. Maybe some lemon. So we'll see what I end up adding into this. But I kind of want to taste it before I add anything. And we'll see what happens. All right, guys, so here's the finished product. Came out really, really good. I love the consistency. I love the flavor. Um, the food processor was definitely the way to go. And we're just warming up some naan, and that's what we're going to put it on. So as soon as that's done, we'll get a real nice taste. And I don't know. I just think this is a really nice and easy way um, and useful way to, to use your eggplants. So... If you're into more of these videos, guys, you want to see me make more cooking videos, let me know in the comments down below. You guys can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter now. So uh, a lot of things like this that I'll make inside, I'll take a picture of it and post it on there. And you normally don't get to see it on the YouTube channel. So you can follow me over there at the same tag as the YouTube channel. And I'll talk to you all later. Take care.